Welcome to the 4321 Wood Shop. This week we're doing a planter box because we were challenged by two other shops to see who could build the best one. So I'm going to need your help to go watch their videos. I'll have links down below on those and comment on their videos that I made the best set of planter boxes. Don't let them fool you. The kid's tough, but I think we can take him. So we were challenged first by Graf Wood Shop. And then by Friday night wood shop. But four, three, two, one rose to the challenge and will come out on top. So with that, I will show you how I built these three. Now, I'd like to point out that these two are off of the plans of the Porterhouse Planter Box. And these plans you could get too. If you just join the 731 Woodworking Community on Facebook, these are out there for free. And I'll put a link to that group down below so you can go do that. And keep in mind, there's nothing wrong with using somebody else's plans, especially if they're offered up, in this case, for free or purchasing them. It's not a big deal. Um, in fact, that's why I'm giving credit. Chad Porterhouse came up with this design posted it out there and we're gonna use it because he's let us. So that's to make the smaller one. Now, it's not much of a variation, but I put a little tweak on it to make this one and just made it a little bit taller. So, and that's how we got three different planter boxes as a set here that kind of look nice together. Now, let's get at it and show you how we made these. Okay, let's get some cuts going here. So. We're going to take three of these boards and we're going to take two 12 inch sections off of each of them just by butting them up against this block. Okay, let's get some cuts going here. So we're going to take three of these boards and we're going to take two 12 inch sections off of each of them just by butting them up against this block. Take off the block, run it across with our miter gauge on our table saw here. Um, this is a little bit more accurate in my shop. You could also use a circular saw for this. You could technically use a jigsaw for this. You could use a miter saw if you have it. So whatever you have, it doesn't have to be the table saw. In fact, some of those others may be a little bit easier. I just don't have an accurate miter saw, so I'm doing it this way. So uh, let's get these cuts going. After the 12s, we're going to do 11 inches. So three of the boards, we're just going to take four 11-inch sections off them. Some of you beginners may be wondering about the block there and why didn't we just set the fence at 12 inches or why didn't we just run the block with it? And all of that has to do with when we're making these cuts, if we had it right there against that fence and it bound up, you could get a kickback. But by having that little gap there, we create some room for that to go and not kick back at us. So just a safety precaution for the most part. So those there, now we'll do our 11s. Okay, we got our boards over here for the 12 inch sides. Now we need the 11 inch. So we're gonna go ahead and measure this up. But the fence isn't gonna come in far enough because of this fence won't because of my fence on here. So we're just gonna go to 11. We're gonna turn our block. Now, 
And see there, my fence moves just slightly when I go to clamp it. So there we go. Now we'll do the 11 inch using the block this way. Okay, so from our three boards, we still have one full length. And we've got one that we've cut 24 inches off of. So now we need to rip each of these down and have a two and a half inch width section out of both boards. We've set our fence on our table saw at two and a half inches. I apologize for the poor lighting in the background, but I gotta have the door open in order to rip the long one. For one planter, you're gonna rip those two boards down, the short one and one left long one, full length board. We've got three planners we're doing, so we're going to rip down six boards total. So let's get that going. Okay, again, sorry about the bad lighting behind me. Um, but I have set aside all of the pieces for one of the planners. We're down to building just two right now. Uh, reason being, we're going to do something a little different with that third planner. But we're going to take the off cuts, so we have our two and a half inch wide cuts over here that we're going to turn into 13 and a half and 11s depending on how many we need of each. So we're going to rip these all down to two inches now. So I've moved the fence over to two. We'll get those ripped down. Be right back with you. We've gone ahead and set up for a 13 and a half inch width. So we're going to go ahead and take, I've separated these out. So we have some two inch wide ones. Um, I did cut at my radial arm saw off basically 14 inches off the full boards just because I can't fit the full board to the left here, I found out early on in this. So um, there is plenty of length there to cut it down if you have another saw. Um, my radial arm saw isn't accurate for good straight cuts, so I know which end I cut that off of. It's better for just rough cutting. So we've done that. So these will all get cut down into 13 and a half. These will all get cut down into 11. So you should end up with, for one planter box, four 13 and a halves and five 11s. So let's get that done. Okay, as I just found out from my plans, I have these 11 inch or two inch wide that I'm supposed to make a bunch of 11 inch and a couple of 15s and these two and a half inch wide that I was supposed to rip down to two inches when I had it set that way. So if you forgot to do that, go back and do it. That's what I'm about to do is rip those down and then we'll batch out those 11s and those 15s. You've seen that process. So I'll get those done and we'll start getting this thing put together after that. We're going to turn this into this. I'm going to start by putting some oil in my Brad nailer. And we're going to load it up with nails. We're going to start with the legs here. So we have the wider one, narrower one. So we're going to put glue on the narrower one, lay it down, put this one up to it, glue them together, nail them. Uh, the reason we're doing the wider versus 
butted against that is so that it's two and a half inches when you look at it this way and two and a half inches when you look at this way. <clears throat> uh, when I did the other planer, or the, the other planter, I keep saying planer, the other planter, I did have it mess up on that and we glued them wrong. So I ended up having to pull those apart, re-glue them and we were all set. I've got my glue brush, got my glue. I'm using Tight Bond 2 for this project. Yes, it is a Gorilla Glue bottle. I just reused the bottle. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the glue on here. I'm using Tight Bond 2 because it is water resistant. So if these are outside, it should be okay. Gorilla Glue probably is also, and I do have some. I just thought I'd use the two on this project. Got our handy little glue brush for spreading. I'll put a link to that if you wanna pick one up. They are handy. And they're not really all that expensive. So get our glue spread on there. And go ahead and put one down. Put this up. Now I am being careful. I'm trying to remember to get my hand out of the line of fire from Brad Newick. You just never know. Yes, it should go right into that wood, but what if you hit high, hit low, something just skewers, you wanna make sure you're being safe. So hand here, I'm nailing down here towards this end. Switch my hand. There. Yeah, I'll just put them over here, stand them up. And I'm kind of just looking at these because they were ripped. So one edge is a little bit rougher than the other, that kind of unfinished look. And that's what I'm putting towards the corner just because I think that's where you'll have the most attention. You can do what you'd prefer. And we have our four legs. So I'm not worried about any glue on the inside because we're actually gonna cover that in our next step. So I'm just wiping up any glue squeeze out on the outside here. We'll move on to the next step. So we take two of our legs, put the wide edge down, take our 12 foot boards, match them up how they're gonna go in here, pick what way looks best. Three board, like this one, I think should go this way. Now that we've got our edge boards down, we know where the glue is gonna go, so we're gonna take them off to the sides here. Put some glue on there, some glue on here. I'm gonna brush that around. Now I'm not taking it all the way to the edges. I don't know if I should be. Again, you can comment down below on that if you think I should. I'm really just trying, I'm doing just so the end in the corner here will get on there. The main part there, but not all the way to the top, not all the way to the bottom. And my real reason is I'm just trying to minimize my glue squeeze out. I don't, maybe I should be, but I figure with nails and screw or glue work should be okay. We did get some up towards the top there, but we're still okay. I'll just nail it. Five boards or five nails per maybe overkill. I'm not really my first time with a brad nailer. Sorry, you probably didn't hear that. Really my first time with a brad nailer. I keep talking as I hit the trigger. This is my first time with a brad nailer. So I don't know if five is good, if 12 would, I, assuming I don't need 12, maybe three is good enough. 
And we're gonna set that aside. Again, take them down, grab our 12s. Okay, we've got our two sides now. Next step, twist these up on end and put our 11 inch ones in. I already know where the glue goes, so we'll get some glue in there and get these nailed down. And the one nice thing is, is I cut these all with a stop block. So for the most part, it's coming out square. I mean, I'm not checking it. It's a planter box. I'm not exactly worried about it being super, super square, but the first one I did looked just fine. So I just had one nail where I didn't hold the brad nailer like I was supposed to and Fixed. Yes. A few moments later. And just like that, we've got our box. So what we're gonna do now is take a tape measure and just measure to be sure our distances, because our 11 inch bottoms are gonna go in here, so we wanna go across this way. And that is just shy of 11 inches. So we're gonna go cut some off those uh, scraps to go right along here and we'll get our bottom in there. Okay, I have my two strips. They're just gonna go on the 12 inch boards right along the sides so that I don't have to, uh... basically, so when we put in the bottom, we're not nailing it from the outside and having more nails on the outside. So far, the only nails on the outside are on the legs. Everything else has been from the inside. Okay, so this is where it's time to put in the bottom slats. Uh, we have five of those two inch wide by 11 inches long pieces, plus two more that will go on the tops here. Um, I've left off my other ones because I want to measure this after I get them, these on, see my distance, cut them, and then go from there. Uh, in any case, five in the bottom. I'm not gluing them, I'm just brad nailing them. My reasoning, and I don't know if it's correct or not, is just that that's where most of the moisture is going to go down in a planter. So if anything's gonna rot out first, maybe it's that, and maybe you can replace it and get a second run. I don't, my first planter, so we're gonna find out this year. So I'm just gonna brad nail those right on the bottom. Um, it is super tight to get it in here. There is that, and now let's do our top pieces. So I just run a little bit of glue up here where these are gonna sit. Okay, for these top pieces, I put a little bit of glue where they're gonna go. Run that along with our brush. I did move my hand out of the way of that one. Measure across here, 14 and 5 eighths. So I'm gonna go cut those off. Okay, we've got our two pieces here. So we're gonna go ahead and get our glue down on one of these sides. I'm also brushing some on the end grain of that last piece we just put on. Go ahead and take our piece, put it on there, flush it up, and nail it on. Be mindful of where you're putting these nails on the end. There's an overhang. So yesterday on the one I did, I did put a nail outside. It went through. I had to pound it back out and fix it. So if you do, again, it's always fixable. Look at what you got going on. Let's figure out a way to fix it. It's just wood. Just taking care of any of that last little blue squeeze out. And then this guy's done. Just like that, we have two planters. But do you think we could take it one step further? Let's see. And boom, we've made a third planter. All I did on this one was went up to 20 inches on the legs just to give some height difference between them. And there's our three planters. So go ahead and comment below on who you think made the best planter or planter set, wink wink. Um, check out the other two videos. If you could like, subscribe, comment to my channel, that would be great. And go ahead and comment on how you think these are the best planter boxes out of the three designs. And go check out those other two guys and their builds. So thank you and have a good night.